Our next guest is another author as well. Um, she is the author of the Nora Abbott Mystery Series, and she has lived all over the place and has won several awards for her work. So please welcome Shannon Baker. <laughs> A hunky elf. <laughs> Everyone can use a hunky elf. I like it. We're all in agreement up here. So how are you, Shannon? I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm enjoying a book tour, and I get to a spend some tour. time in Colorado, which is one of my favorite yes. places. So. What's a book? Are you touring your books? Yes. Which so, books are you um, touring in now? So the my my uh, newest release is Stripped Bear, okay. and it just came out September 6th from Macmillan. And so I'm I've loaded my husband and my dog in our uh, pickup, and we're doing a <laughs> camping tour through the west, just awesome. up through the, the front range. And, and you were able to stop here with yes. us. Yes, yeah, very Hopefully excited. Hopefully you're not like camping in the parking lot out there. No, I and I- love to give tickets, so yeah, just be careful. Yeah, I, I got here early and I sat out at the Tivoli Brewery out oh, on the nice. patio, and oh, what a gorgeous Colorado yeah, day. Isn't it? And you took your dog with you. We have a crazy Weimaraner. Okay. And she's, she's coping very well. Good. <laughs> Do you take your dogs with you a lot on these tours? And well, this is the first one, and she's only a year tour. and a half, okay. and so it's all brand new. Oh. <laughs> we didn't know how it was going to work. Yeah, it sounds like it's it been going to be well, working. Though. Yeah, we're having a good time. Yeah. And you've won, um, correct me if I'm wrong, well, I'm probably going to mess <laughs> up the word, Rocky Mountain... Um, Fiction Writers. Fiction Writers, yes. Writer of the Year. Fiction Writer of the Year. So talk about that award a little bit. So um, that is a... a an achievement award, okay. and I, I was really honored to to win that. A lot of Colorado writers have won that through the years. Diane Mott Davidson and Carol Berg, and yeah. um, just a ton of, of really good writers. So I, I was excited to to be in that rank. And what book was that for a particular book, or just your overall work? Just just my overall work. So that was before this new series, um, and it it culminated that that was the Nora Abbott series, the Nora Abbott series. which um, is. Hopi Indians and um, murder, and you know, an, an environmentalist, and that takes place um, in throughout the Southwest. The first book is set in Flagstaff, and the second book okay. is set in Boulder, Colorado, and the third book is back in Moab. What inspired you to write a series about Hopi Indians and murder? Well, I we'd moved to Flagstaff. You you mentioned that I've moved around. Yes, a lot. you've moved all around. <clears throat> Mostly in the West, well, all, all in the West. Um, we'd moved to Flagstaff, and I was looking around for a, a topic to write about, and there was this huge controversy on man-made snow in the, the ski resort outside of town. Okay. And it's one of the oldest ski resorts, Snowball. But this, um, they wanted to do man-made snow, but the, the peak is sacred to 12 separate tribes. Uh, okay. And so they didn't want that. You know, they, they want to spray treated wastewater on there. And so um, the more I got to looking at it and researching it, I found the Hopi tribe, and they're, they're so fascinating yeah. that I just, they just drew me in. Yeah, so, that's really cool. They're very spiritual, and I keep meaning to look this up, and I never have, but um, it's an ancient, ancient culture. They're a very small tribe. They think, they believe that they're responsible for the balance of the entire world. Okay. So if you, if you draw a line through the Hopi, from the Hopi reservation through the globe, it comes out in Tibet. Oh. And the Tibetan word for sun is the Hopi word for moon. Oh. And the Hopi word for sun is the Tibetan word for moon. Oh. That always gives me chills. That's crazy. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, so we talked about a little bit about where you've lived. Talk a little bit more because I know traveling is no uh, foreign thing to you. So we're, we're living in Tucson now. We finally retired. Okay. Finally right. retired. But you're yeah. still writing. I'm, yeah. I'm a stay-at-home writer, <laughs> and, which I have been for about five years, okay. which is, is really lucky. Um, so my husband retired about a year and a half ago, and we, we settled in Tucson. We hope to stay there for a long time now. But um, before that, when the last 10 years, I was in a, working at a startup in Boulder, and um, it, it, didn't, it sold and was you know, successful. So we started looking around where we wanted to move. My husband was with the railroad, and so we bounced down to Flagstaff, okay. and then I got a chance at another job. We came back up to Boulder, and that didn't fall through. It was another startup that didn't. And so then we moved to Nebraska for a year and a half. And so we just- Did another startup and it didn't fall uh, through. And, and, yeah. 
one thing and another, we just move a lot. Yeah. Well, it, it sounds like you get a lot of different cultures and a lot of different you know, perspectives. On different yeah. Things. You know, we, ha we haven't been desert dwellers, so this is all new. This it's is all, all new. They Moving don't out. have fall, but but they have rattlesnake season. So. Oh, goodness. That, I can't do ghost stories and ghosts, and I can't do rattlesnakes. So <laughs> we're, we're in rattlesnake I don't season. think I could <laughs> handle either one. I'd be like, oh, no. Um, so you're writing a new series now. Right. Talk a little bit about that series. So I lived in the Nebraska Sandhills for 20 years, and it's um, a, a unique landscape. And I wa I've always wanted to write about it because um, it's it's oh, about 22,000 square miles, okay. and um, the population density is 0.95 people per square mile. So hardly anybody lives there. So people don't know about it, so I could write about it. Um, they actually have their own culture, very cowboy, very yeah. uh, rural. Um, but I, and I, I lived there for 20 years. I left about 10 years ago, and I left because, well, 13 years ago, um, my husband had an affair in this town of 200 people. And I was, I was the third to the last person to know, behind my daughter and his parents, right. whom I had to then tell. Yeah. Um, so it took me a little bit of time to, to get my sense of humor back about that. Yeah. <laughs> but when I did, then I, w I was ready to write about ready it. Ready to write about it. So, right so this, this series takes place in the Sandhills. We call it Longmire Meets the Good Wife. Longmire Meets the Good Wife. It's a like woman it. sheriff in the Nebraska Sandhills. Awesome. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun to write. Yeah, I bet. And someday we can maybe get a crossover between sounds like you guys' writing styles could mesh together with a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of ghost <laughs> stories, some Hopi Indians, the female sheriff, all mixed together in there. Well, you know, when I, when I wrote the, the Nora Abbott series and I did all this research on Hopi, Hopi are very secretive, really yeah. secretive tribe, and rightly so. They've had a lot of bad things happen yes. with people from outside. So, um, so I, when, that, when I finished that series, I was really happy because I thought, good, I, I don't have to struggle with writing about a culture that I don't really know that much about. I never wrote from the point of view of a Hopi person, but from a person looking in. Um, but it, fascinating, but difficult to write about a culture that is so secretive. And I thought, yay, don't have to do that anymore. And then I, you know, because even though this Sandhills culture is odd and different, I do understand it because I lived yeah. there for so long. But then in book two, it, it turns out that a, a deputy, she hires a deputy that's Lakota Sioux. So I'm back in that same it's thing. Back, all circled back around. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you can tell, but I obviously don't have any Native American blood. <laughs> but you have an appreciation for it and that you have you, a passion yeah, for it. I do, I, yeah. Yes. All right. Well, thank you guys both so much for coming on. Well, Thanks, uh,